George, we've seen upward pressure on the uranium prices recently. Can you tell us what you think might be one of the catalysts for this? Well, obviously, I think it's the possibility of a sanction on Russian uranium. You know, that is in, in the works right now. It hasn't been completely enacted. But I think the market is saying that's likely to happen. Now, the, the restrictions won't go into effect immediately. But over a period of time, that will cause the demand for uranium to switch from Russian and Kazakhstan, likely, to non, you know, Russian non-Kazakh uranium. Now, where is that going to come from? It's going to come from Australia. It's going to come from Canada. It's come from a bit from Africa and from the U.S. And those sources are going to require higher prices than we've had in the past. You know, the Kazakhs are very efficient at producing uranium. Very low cost. So are the Russians. But the free world has to have a return on their capital. And so you have to have a price that justifies the production. So that's why we're seeing the price going up, because it's going to take a higher price to justify this non-Russian, non-Kazakh production. And of course, you were speaking with us earlier. and You mentioned that there's only three companies in the United States currently producing. Is that correct? That, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I believe there are only three others that have any possibility of producing in the next six to eight years. Well, and those, every- those other, other three can come on. So we only have six production companies and their, their quantity of production is going to be limited. We don't have an unlimited quantity. The U.S. consumes over 50 million pounds a year. We can't produce 50 million pounds a year any in the U.S. anytime soon. We can't even probably produce half of that in the, in the next four or five years. Given time, we can. But we don't need to produce 50 million pounds in the U.S. We've got Canada. We've got Australia. We've got Africa, part of Africa we can rely on. So we don't need the Russians. We don't need the Kazakhs. So what we need is time. And we need a little bit higher price, not a substantially higher price. And we don't need 150. I met with a company just the other day that thinks the price is going to $100 within two years. And I don't share that. I don't think it's gonna go to $100 in two years. But we don't need $100 and neither do most of these companies, but they do need more than the current price. So that's why I think we're seeing a slow increase in the price and we'll continue to see that over the next two years to get to a place. Now the price could spike like it did. Take a look at what happened in 2006 and seven. Price, the spot price went to what, $130 a pound. It didn't stay there. But that was the perception that we needed that to produce. Well, we didn't. And the price could spike way above it for a while. And interestingly enough, if that happens, those companies that have not committed all their production under contracts can take advantage of that. You know, you take a look at a company like Paladin, I don't like to refer to other companies much, but Paladin was a great producer back during that boom. They didn't sign any long-term contracts. And what happened? The price dropped and Paladin went bankrupt. Paladin should have signed contracts and they could have. They could have gotten 80 or $90 contracts and Paladin wouldn't have been in that position because Paladin is a producer. So what happens in this next go around, if you're a producer and you can step up and sign those contracts at those significantly higher prices, you'll be a lot better off because I'm not guaranteeing if price goes to $80, it may not stay at 80. You know, once the world produces enough uranium at that price, price could fall. Then there's no guarantee it'll stay at 80, 90, or $100 for the next 20 years. It might. But the producers that can take advantage of that will certainly be in a good position in the next two to three years. And that's where we are. And, and, and that is where you are. Sunday Mine can produce for 20 years. Is that correct? Well, yeah, we've got at least a 20-year life at the Sunday Mine. At, at, at the levels we expect to produce. And we've announced that, you know, we're producing maybe 2 million pounds a year. Part of that, most of that will be out of the Sunday mine. We're also in the process of committing a, a, an additional project, the San Rafael project. Uh, but those two basically would give us at least a 20-year life, if not more. So if I hear you correct, right now, we're waiting for legislation to proceed in the House 
uh, to keep us from buying Russian and potentially Kazakhstanian uranium, correct? Yes, that's right. And it looks like that could happen, uh, certainly this, this summer. Things are heating up. And it, as I said, it's come out of the committee of both the Senate and the House. You know, with the recommendation, it's got to go to the full House, the full Senate, and then it's got to be signed by the president. But it seems like there's enough support for this thing once they iron out the, the small differences. And there are differences between the House and the Senate version. They iron out these small versions. I think it'll, it'll become law. Now, how long it takes for the sanctions to be in place where they're really saying we're not going to have any Russian or Kazakh uranium. You know, that's still in the, the details. But eventually that will encourage the utilities to step up and contract with non-Russian, non-Kazakh producers. So that's something else we found that the general market doesn't understand. And the real demand for uranium is actually the utility companies. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, obviously, they're the consumer of the product. You can have, you know, you can have traders that buy uranium, and you can have other sources that buy, like these funds. You know, the Sprott fund buys uranium, but they don't consume any. They certainly buy it and hold it. But that is not the end use of uranium, not to be held by a fund. The end use of uranium is to produce electricity. And uh, obviously, demand is going to come. We think the Sprott is a good thing. You know, they're buying uranium, taking it out of the market. The utilities are the real key because they consume the product uh, and, and they consume a lot of it. And you look at the projections for nuclear power, they're going to be a lot more consumed in the future, not a lot less. So that's going to drive the demand for uranium also because consumption is going to go up. And these new small modular reactors are going to add to that. And I think that's just that's the future of the industry. More reactors, more power from nuclear power. And it's, it's really come on the last couple of years, people are saying, we've got to have nuclear power to meet carbon requirements. You don't have it, you're not going to get there. Well, you heard it here on Investor Intel. For more information on Western uranium and vanadium, please go to the following website. Thank you, George.